Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to the episode of the Washington Commanders franchise here on Madden NFL 24 where the Commanders are back at home after dropping a game last week against the Dallas Cowboys playing host to the 4-7 Chicago Bears. Commanders played tough last week, but it was an undefeated Dallas team that was able to beat them, so they're looking to get back in the win column against the Chicago Bears team that has struggled in recent weeks. Losers of their last three. But this is not a Bears team to take lightly. They've improved the offense. They've believed in Justin Fields with a new contract, and they're going to be a task here at FedEx Field. If you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content, as it will be the Chicago Bears starting off with the football. And we're underway here in week number 12. Happy Thanksgiving. It is this week. It would have just happened three days ago. So the Bears get the football. We'll take a look at Justin Fields, who was rewarded with a five-year, $146 million contract. So they believe in Justin Fields. He's gotten better this year. Still not at his peak, I would say. 1,800 yards, 12 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. But he's done enough to warrant the big contract for Bears front office. There's a 9-yard pickup to Albert Okaway, but I'm the longtime Denver Bronco tight end. He's now on second and one. Khalil Herbert, the lead back, goes backward. Jeremiah Trotter shoots the gap. And now the Bears facing a third and three out the gate, trying to set up a screen for Herbert, and he is not going to get there. The Commanders' defense, which has played very well in recent weeks, forces a three and out. Now to bring up Kirk Cousins as Washington offense. Cousins last week, four interceptions, a struggle throwing interceptions has been the key early in the season, and it reared his head last week. 14 to 14 ratio for him in TDs to INTs. Start off on the ground, Antonio Gibson gets the first carry this week. Him and Devin Singletary have been splitting roles since he came back from injury, and they've done pretty good. Speaking of Singletary, here he is on second and four trying to redirect before being tackled after a gain of one. And now Washington on third and three. Cousins drops back to pass, doesn't like what he sees, and he's just going to air this one to the sideline. And both teams get a three and out. So Bears will take over back with the football, their own 34-yard line, trying to get back on the ground. Herbert stiff arms Trotter into the ground, but Trotter, nice second effort, able to bring him down. Good at motor on him. As Herbert last week, 15 carries, 78 yards, and a touchdown in their loss. As on second and five, they're going to lean on him again, and he gets a nice crease up the middle, and Khalil Herbert is out to about midfield. As Chicago putting an early emphasis on the run game, despite having some talented weapons at wide receiver. As first and ten, they're going to get Tevin Jenkins on a false start. Jenkins re-signed as well, two years, $11.7 million contract, so he'll be their left guard for the next couple of years. Is on first and 15, laid out. Benjamin St. Just, who's now the new nickel quarter with a nice hit. And now Chicago faces third and 11, and Fields is going to go down. Speared by Montez Sweat. Goldberg, Edge, and company would be very impressed with that spear. So the Bears don't get any points, and next drive for the Commander starts off with a five-yard run by Singletary, who had 87 on the ground and one touchdown in the win against Dallas. Also had a receiving touchdown. Second and five, go back to him again. There's a pickup of two, so now it's third and three quickly for the Washington offense. They're going to hand it off to Singletary, and this time he does have a big crease, and Singletary has plenty of running room, giving chase is Jaquan Brisker, who gets him down to the 31, and that was a big-time ripoff by Devin Singletary. Gets him deep into Chicago territory. He's now first and 10 going play fake across the middle trying to find Curtis Samuel. And that one's knocked free. Brings it now second and 10. Cousins again back to the air. Rolls to his right. Fires short. And there's the rookie Johnny Wilson with his first grab of the day. He's going to be getting a little bit more playing time with no Jahan Dotson for the next couple of weeks. He moves the chains now in the red zone, goes Washington, is on first and 10, and there's a nice catch by Wilson. Good catch in traffic to hold on to that one. Second and five, Cousins makes a change of the line of scrimmage. Going to drop back a throw, Brayers bring pressure, throws left side, and he can't connect with Mo Ali Cox. There was traffic, but he struggled to hold on to those contested grabs this year. Third and five. Cousins play fake again. Looks right side. And he has a touchdown. That's the rookie Eric Ali with a sensational diving grab. And he gets Washington on the board first seven and nothing. Ali has played great in my opinion. I think he's actually outplayed Moali Cox as a sixth round rookie. Good flash there. There's a one yard run for Justin Fields. He tried to keep it on the read option. And well, it's not going to matter because a false start 
on right guard Nate Davis. We'll erase that and more. This is now second and 14. This time he does give it off to Herbert, and he's going to run around into the arms of Davis after a gain of three, and now Chicago faces a third and long. Fields to throw. Going to step up in the pocket, thought about running, but Washington was ready. You mean Davis spying Justin Fields. That'll force another punt, and Washington has a 7-0 lead after the first quarter of play. Begin the second quarter at their own 30. And they hand it off to Singletary. Gets a nice little running lane. And he's going to pick up a first down. Six for 62 early for the former Baltimore Raven. Go back to him on the next play. Nice block right side. Big juke move there on Brisker. Able to spring up for a little extra. That is Antonio Gibson this time. The superstar halfback who, when kept fresh, is very deadly. After the new set of downs, Cousins doesn't like what he sees. He's going to step up and scramble. We don't see this much out of Kirk these days, but it's a seven-yard pickup up the middle. Second and three. Now they're going to hand it back off to Gibson, who's going to get a little bit of space on his third carry of the day. And Washington's ground game doing very good. Next play, again Gibson trying to outrun the defense to the right side, but Tremaine Edmonds gives chase. He wraps him up after a gain of three. Two tight ends now here, second and seven. They're going to give it to Singletary again. He's going to be met in the hole by T.J. Edwards after a pickup of about one. That makes it now third and six. Cousins making some changes at the line. Blitz picked up by Chicago. Floats it right side for Samuel, but he can't get it. Nice play was made, and that'll force three, but Washington now has a 10 to nothing lead. Next drive, Bears try to start with read option. It's going to go backwards. However, there is a flag. There is holding on the offense specifically on Albert Okawebenum. And it looks like Washington will actually accept. They'll take the first and 20 over the second and 13. And again, they go back to the ground. Chicago with a heavy emphasis on the run here, trying to get fields in space, but it seems like Washington is ready. Gets those penalty yards back. Now third and two is the Bears' offense. Again, they go to the ground, and I think everybody knew that, including this man, Jonathan Allen, who's lived in the backfield this season, forces another Bears punt. And that gives Washington the football back, who's basically controlled the momentum of this game. Two-yard pickup on first down by Devin Singletary. Second and eight. Again, give it to Singletary. Not a lot of space, but he's going to somehow pick up about five. Makes it a much more manageable third and three. They'll go to the air here. Cousins right side. That's a tough grab. And it's Johnny Wilson. Again, great catch in traffic by the rookie wideout. Definitely impressing Washington faithful. As he moves the chains, and Kirk Cousins' next play will dump this one to the sideline. Not trying to make any mistakes this week. Second and ten, back to the ground. Gibson, big hole up the middle, and he's going to spring him for another first down. The offensive line, which got a lot of upgrades this offseason at guard, is paying off. They're creating these massive running lanes for Gibson and Singletary. First and ten, trying to go play action. Had a man open downfield, but T.J. Edwards got there in time. Sacks down Cousins. Now third and six on this drive. Cousins, quick pass across the middle. Has Samuel, who does hold on this time, before being speared down by Edwards. And again, that'll move the chains. Washington put together a nice long drive here to end the first half. And Singletary's going to break free again. He's going to get down to the six-yard line. Tracked down by Eddie Jackson. Another goal to go trip here for Washington. As they try to give it to Gibson now, who powers his way forward to the one-yard line. Second and goal. Motion in, out of the backfield to Singletary. They dump it to him in the flat, and nobody is there. Another touchdown for Singletary. It's now 17 to nothing in favor of Washington, dominating the Chicago Bears here on both sides of the football. As that takes us to the two-minute warning, Chicago needs to get points. Washington gets the ball back at half, so you have an opportunity here to try to at least put something on the board. As that one's overthrown. Second and ten now. Herbert, or Fields, looking for Herbert out of the backfield. Has him right side, and he's going to be brought down after a two-yard pickup. They're not giving Fields a lot of chances to throw the ball downfield. Now third and eight. Fields, again, looks left side, and he has his man, but he's going to step out of bounds. And that'll force a punt, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. Where Washington has dominated this football game. 17-0, but don't go anywhere. More football right after this. Week 12 around the NFL as it starts to heat up for the playoff picture, the home stretch of this season. 
Let's take a look first off in Texas where the Houston Texans host the New York Giants. And again, the Texans are up 21 to 14. It seems like the wheels have fallen off big blue. They're losing now to the three and seven Texans. In the Meadowlands, the Jets playing host to the Bills in New York is losing 21 to seven. The Jets, they're making a run at that number one pick and potentially drew Alar. Zach Wilson not doing it out there. And finally, in New Orleans, the Saints playing host of the Eagles, and the Eagles trumping New Orleans right now, 23-3. Three first-half touchdowns for Jalen Hurts, as the Eagles just try to do their best to keep pace with the Dallas Cowboys. Back to our game here in the second half, as Washington starts off with the football, they're going to start off on the ground, as that's not going to go anywhere. Nice play by the nickel corner, Kyler Gordon. Second and 10, how about Gibson? Yep, he's going to spring a right side, and that's going to pick up a first down. Washington's ground game. Looks like they're going to continue where they left off. Next play, it's a little pitch pass here. Trying to get Terry McLaurin involved in this game. That's his first catch of the day. Technically, it was a reception. Second and eight, Cousins. Quick throw up the seam, and he has Johnny Wilson open, and he's going to get run forward to the 32. He's got six for 66 today. Have yourself a day rookie. Now at the 32 of Chicago, setting up a screen. There's Devin Singletary trying to outrun the superstar linebacker. Instead, he makes Edmonds miss before being brought down for a gain of six. How about on the ground? Gibson checks back in again. This time, no hole for him. He picks up two and makes it third down. Going underneath center. Singletary the deep back. He's going to get it here. Nice block on the right side, and he's just going to get enough to pick up the first down. That'll move the chains and keep this drive alive. And this is, again, just killing clock. Already a three-score game. Washington trying to make it more. Is on first and ten. Wilson's open again. Seventh grab of the day for the third-round rookie out of Florida State. Goal to go, Washington. Chicago brings a heavy blitz on first down, and he's going to bring down Kirk Cousins. That was Jaquan Brisker. Second goal down for the 13. Singletary at the backfield breaks a tackle, and he's going to get tackled at the five by Jack Sanborn. And it's a third and goal. Chicago cannot give up another touchdown here. But Cousins finds Singletary in the flats again, and he's going to score the second receiving touchdown of the day for Singletary, who's well over double-digit touchdowns on the season. What a pickup he has been at the trade deadline. So now it's a 24-0 lead for Washington, as Chicago is just still intent on running the football. They lose one on first down, and then on second and 11, there's a nice spinning grab by Marvin Harrison Jr., the number one overall pick out of Ohio State. Like I said, the Chicago has good wide receivers. They're just not getting involved. They try to get to Harrison there, but again, double coverage, broken up, another punt, and we're just going to go to the end of the third quarter. This one, 24 to nothing in favor of the Commanders. This one in the final frame. Washington just trying their best to run the clock out, and they're doing a good job of it. First down there for Gibson. Three tight ends here on this first down play. You know they're going to give it to Singletary. He picks up two, who's now over the century mark. Second and eight. That one's going to be tackled down quickly by Edmonds. Now Singletary does have two receiving touchdowns. He's actually hurt on the play. He would be okay, though. He actually come back later in this quarter. Third and nine, trying to get it quickly to Mo Alley Cox. That's going to be three yards shy. Now he's hurt, but again, he would also be okay. So Chicago does force a punt, and they're driving down here on their next possession as there's a nice strike across the middle. That's the former Seahawk, Tyler Lockett. He was traded for in the draft with a nice grab. He makes a goal to go for Chicago, and after the injury to Cody White here, Fields is going to roll left side, and he's going to find the end zone. First touchdown of the day for the Bears. They get six. Now they do need a two-point conversion here, and it's not going to work. So still a three-score game in favor of Washington. Now underneath eight minutes left to go in this one. First and ten for Singletary. He's going to pick up six. I know he has two receiving touchdowns, but he's actually been stopped here on the second half on the ground. Chicago's done a nice job in run defense overall this half. Is on third and six. They force Cousins to throw the football away, and that'll be another punt. And again, Chicago will get the football back. Inside five minutes to go here. Third and four. Fields looks right side, but that's not going to connect. Nice big hit there by Trotter. And on fourth and four, the Chicago Bears got to go for it. They're going to go empty here. Fields takes a snap, fires short, has his man. That's a nice first down to Cole Komet, and he's actually going to stay down on the field. Not good news for Chicago. What is good news is they had a first down on first and ten. A beautiful deflection there. That was Emmanuel Forbes, who's had a great sophomore campaign. Second and ten, Fields in the flat, fires. That's going to be caught. 
Nice seven-yard pickup, but it makes it third and three. Chicago going no huddle. They realize they need three scores and only have three and a half minutes. There's Tyler Lockett getting free on third down. Nice grab, catch and run. He did that for a long time in Seattle. They're one of the most underrated receivers in the league. First and ten, Fields goes down. Chase Young, the team leader in sacks, gets that one for a loss. Now third and 14. Fields in the pocket, steps up, he fires, and there's a nice pass across the middle. That's Khalil Herbert out of the backfield. He gets down to the one-yard line, and now Chicago has goal to go. They're going to give it to Roshan Johnson, who's going to find his way into the end zone. Another touchdown for Chicago, trying to make it close. They're now down by 11. They have to kick the onside kick. It is going to be picked up by Johnny Wilson, another feather in his cap today. That'll take us to the two-minute warning. Washington just trying to run out as much clock as they can and get out of here with the win. Unfortunately, it is third and 13 as they're just going to force another Chicago Bear timeout before giving the book back, ball back to the Bears. Tressway will punt this one away. The lefty kicker, I haven't talked about him a lot this year. I do think he could do a little bit better job punting as that one goes out of bounds of the 17. Fields, first and 10, fires right side. That's going to be caught by DJ Moore, seven-yard pickup for him. Nice tackle by Benjamin St. Just, doesn't allow him to get out of bounds. Clock continues to run. They went no huddle, and there's Herbert going to pick up a first down. And again, nice tackle in bounds. So because of that, the clock has continued to run. Chicago's holding their final timeout. There's another tackle in bounds, and, well, you're going to have to do a little bit more than just keep throwing it short to your running back. Second and ten, or second and six, excuse me. Field steps up. There's a nice pass across the middle. DJ Moore again. This is what I'm talking about. The Bears have some good wideouts. Between Lockett, Moore, and Harrison, I believe they should have just leaned into those guys more. Instead, they're going to throw it again to Herbert here on first and ten. He's going to be tackled down. So with 18 seconds, Chicago uses their final timeouts. And on second and five, Fields is going to be sacked by Chase Young. Second time today, and that's going to end this one. The clock will strike zeros, and the Commanders win by a final score of 24 to 13. I do believe the score makes it look closer than it was. The Commanders kind of dominated this game, but they definitely took their foot off the gas in the second half, specifically the fourth quarter. And the Bears were able to add 13 points and make it look like they had a good offense. When in reality, they did not. Fields ended up throwing for 273, but a lot of that came in garbage time in the fourth quarter, so I'm not too worried about that. And how about Johnny Wilson with the day? He had a great day stepping up in place of the injured DeHaan Dotson. Those are the kind of things I want to see going to the second half of this year as well as next season. So week 12, here are your scores. We're actually going to spend a little bit of time here on week 12 because it was Thanksgiving. I want to take a look at the three Thanksgiving games. Starting off with the Lions and what they do best, and that's lose on the holiday. 28-21 loss here at home against the Indianapolis Colts. The Lions aren't that great of a team this year. Indianapolis just trying to stay alive in the AFC. This will help. The next game, though, the Cowboys, they beat the Ravens 28-26, which means Dallas is now 11-0. So we'll again be facing an undefeated Cowboys team next week at Landover in FedEx Field. It's going to be a big-time matchup. And the third Thanksgiving game, the Panthers smoked the Cardinals 34-7 as Bryce Young has really taken that step up here in his second year. And the Cardinals just looking for some sort of answer on their football. Next up, we got the Chiefs and the Bengals on Sunday. 31-21 win here for Kansas City. As the Bengals, they start off 6-1. Burrow got hurt. They lost a few games and now haven't really gotten back on track as Kansas City, though, picks up a big win on the road. Sunday Night Football, the Dolphins, speaking of big win on the road, beat the 49ers 38-13. Brock Purdy did not have a good game. The 49ers are one of the biggest disappointments of the year. They're now underneath 500 when a lot of people thought they could contend for a Super Bowl. And then on Monday Night Football, the Vikings beat the Titans 24-17 behind Bo Nix. Baker Mayfield looked pretty good. Ezekiel Elliott now in Minnesota had a touchdown. And Minnesota could be a team... That makes a little bit of noise in the postseason if they make it. Here are your players of the week. Hertz gets it for the Eagles. He had six passing touchdowns in their win against the Saints. Mahomes, three of his own in that game. We saw Mosley get an interception in their loss. And then Newbin had a pick six for the Atlanta Falcons. So that brings us to week 13 and another matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Before we look at that, here is a look at our first playoff picture of the season. You can see both squads. There's two stacked divisions, you'll notice. The AFC West has three teams currently in the postseason, and the NFC East, minus us, 
has three teams in the postseason, but the Chiefs currently the one seed in the AFC. The Cowboys currently the one seed in the NFC, but still plenty of time, plenty of football left to be played, including our big matchup next week against the Dallas Cowboys at home. Still the best offensive in football. Dak Prescott still trying to make his case for MVP. We just faced them last episode, 41 to 31 loss. I do think we played better, but those four interceptions did kill us. We did throw one of those in the end zone, which was a big swing. And we did beat Dallas last year at home in week 18. So I know we can do it again. I know it's not the same Dallas team. They're playing a lot better this year, but don't count us out yet. Just because we're five and six, doesn't mean we can make a little bit of noise. We've been playing better football recently. We've won more than we lost in our past six games. And I believe that we could maybe pull out an upset at home. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.